And for the pledge tonight from Martin Elementary, we have Brinley Davis and Bristol Davis. Welcome all of our visitors. Thank you for being here. Uh, we appreciate your interest in our children's education and how we approach the upcoming future. Uh, I'd also at this time, and I know it's probably not the appropriate time, but Ms. Colleen Mall is one of our county commissioners and Mr. Joe Sherrill is one of our county commissioners and we appreciate so much you being here. Thank you. Thank you. Next is our uh, special recognition, our student board representatives. I'm going to put you on the spot tonight. I'm going to let you introduce yourselves. Mm -hmm. um, I'm from SMHS. I'm Nicole. I'm a senior there. I'm from Phoenix High School. I'm a senior too. My name is Braden Whitehead. Thank you for being here. Okay. Let's do a roll call. Ms. Stoll? Here. Ms. Hale? Here. Mr. Safty? Here. Mr. Davis? Here. Mr. King? Here. Ms. Hamby? Here. Ms. Stout? Here. And Ms. Boston is here. Let the record show that Ms. Nichols is not present tonight due to a death in her family. Let me go ahead and add that. Bless her heart. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Patton? Board members, Tennessee Code Annotated Title 49, Chapter 2, Section 202, defines a relative as a spouse, parent, parent-in-law, child, son-in-law, daughter-in-law, grandparent, grandchild, brother, sister, uncle, aunt, nephew, niece, or any person that resides in the same household as you. Each of you that have a relative is defined by statute, please raise your right hand. Let the record reflect Ms. Boston and Mr. King. If each of you certify that the votes that you make tonight will be in the best interest of the Cumberland County School System, regardless of the effect that your vote may have on the employment of your relatives. Do. I do. Let the record reflect both of them. Thank you, Mr. Patton. Yes, ma'am. Um, see, I've already welcomed our elected officials, so we've got that one behind us. Next is our community comments, or the approval of our, let's go back and approval of our minutes. Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve September 27th and September the 28th minutes. So moved. Second. So I have a first and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Approval of the agenda. <coughs> motion we approve the agenda. I would like to uh, amend the agenda if it's okay with you. I will remove my motion. Okay, I would like to approve the agenda with uh, 15H2 and 15H3 combined. Is that a motion? That's a motion. Okay. I will second that. Okay, so we have a first and second to approve the agenda. Any discussion? I'd like to make a motion to uh, remove an item. Okay. Well, we've got to deal with this motion first. Okay. <laughs> What was your motion? We're gonna, we'll go after he goes. Let him go. So we're approving the agenda. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? So the agenda has been approved. Well, no, that was no my motion was to remove an item from the agenda. It was not approve the agenda. No, so, your motion was to combine. No, my motion was to combine. His motion is to remove, so I would... So parliamentarian. We need to back up and remove the motions that have been set forth and, okay. and start over. <laughs> okay, let's start over. Because okay. his motion and Mr. Safdie's 
or something to do with the agenda before we approve it. Yeah. Okay. So you made a motion that we combine 15H. And so we can vote on that and okay. first. I thought that's what we were voting on. No, we were voting on the agenda. Okay. Yeah, you, you so we combined it. Okay. So now, Mr. Davis, your motion. Yeah. I would like to make a motion to remove um, for table the uh, committee appointments this evening. Number 16? Yes. Okay. You want to remove it? Yes. Okay. I'll second that. So we've got a first and second. Roll call. Yeah. I'll do discussion. Miss Dull. Discussion. 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 He asked for discussion. Got any discussion? You, you made a motion. Sure. Yeah. Um, I would like to ask that we take a different look at how we are approaching this appointment based on four different policies. Uh, policy 1.3, policy 1.1, policy 1.101, policy 1.201, and policy 1.4. Okay. What are those policies say? <laughs> Uh, the Cliff Notes version of those policies is that we are currently operating um, outside uh, of the intent of those policies from uh, the appointment process of how uh, we are to determine is whether or not we have committees and the operation of those committees. Can you repeat this so I can look them up? Because I'm, I'm not aware of what you're saying. It's 1 1.3, 1.1, 1.01. 1.101. 1.101. 1.201. 1.201. And 1.4. Yep. <coughs> I, I just feel it'd be in our best interest to continue discussing how we operate per our policy before we decide how... Uh, or who or what method we continue um, in the future. And I can elaborate if you'd like, but. Can we put 1.300 up there? That's the 1.3 that he's got mm -hmm. on there. Can we put it up on the wall? <coughs> So we could have a separate vote for this approval of the committees and the members. Yes. Yes. <coughs> okay. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a little confused as to <laughs> Chris, are you trying to get ready to say something? No, I just, if you read, I will say something. Okay. If you read that first sentence, what does it say? Okay, the board will, the board, I think everybody yes. can read, but. but. However, special committees composed of the board may be appointed by the chairman at the direction of the board. So what's, I think what's, what is confusing about this is number 16, um, their number 16 should have two, um, uh, Two motions. Two or components. Two components. One is the approval of the committees in which the board can either not approve or approve, and then the membership of the committees. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that may not be clear in item 16, but that is the intent. Yes, two, so two parts, yeah. Currently, 16 is asking us to approve the appointment of the committees as they've been determined currently. Yes. Right? So the, what we're asked to do tonight is vote As on, they are proposed. As they're proposed. Mm -hmm. And my ask is that we continue to talk about this in a, different, in a different setting to identify as to whether or not we are operating correctly because I don't know that we're going to get it sorted today. I, I don't know. I, I, if approve, we, I mean, I, I see his point, but I, I respectfully, I think that the policy is very clear. It says that a special... Special committees can be 
determined or appointed by the chairman with approval of the board. Okay. So, so at, at the direction. Is not at the, the direction. At the direction right. of the chairman. Oh, at, at the, the direction the, of the at board. The direction right. of the board. Right. So, so the board hasn't directed the chairman to establish committees. That's what we're okay. voting on tonight. No, no. We're voted on the com on the if committees approve, that were already appointed. If you approve the committees, then you go back and approve the appointments, and then the committees can proceed forward and conduct business. Exactly. So, I we, guess we'll get into it. We will. The, the the point being made is we've got two different states. We've got a current state and an as policy state. Our current state is that uh, currently as up to this point, um, the chair had solicited interest via email for those that would like to join these committees. Mm -hmm. The second one's volunteers were placed. Those that volunteered were placed on the committee that was nominated for it. Um, this is what the way, this is the way that we're currently operating. Committees voted on without established, defined need or board approved <laughs> issues that the board discussed. Where Committee set. Reading from? I'm, I'm reading from from um, how we're operating. Oh, okay, those are just your words. Those are yep. his notes. Okay. So committees are committees set <coughs> meeting dates whenever they see fit. They discuss whenever they see fit. Committees vote to bring issues to the full board for board approval. So in order of operations, that's how we establish the committees and take them in and out of committees. So we're looking to appoint people in these committees without a need or an issue. So if we reference, a, if we reference one of our policies here, okay, we reference 1.3, it says that Policy committee, however, special committees composed of board members may be appointed by the chairman at the direction of the board. So how do we determine the direction of the board? We take a vote. By your vote tonight. Okay. So at, at the vote. And as the needs of the board shall require. So how do we determine what the needs of the board shall require? How, how do we determine well, what the needs are for the committees? Right. I mean, I think yesterday, the day before yesterday's meeting, you made it clear that you would like to see the needs of the board presented on a quarterly basis with one meeting at a time. That's the issue that you want. You want to change the, the, the composition of how we conduct meetings, which is fair. I mean, but whether or not, I think there are several issues that, that we're looking at, I mean, all of us are looking at. Uh, one, we have a new, a, a new director, okay? The director, and I, I fully support our director. I wanna let you know that, okay? However, the director only has a year of experience as director. And the issue then becomes, uh, then becomes, do we want to establish quarterly meetings that go over all of the material that have transpired that's related to the board after three months. Well, uh, I mean, that's what I we're appreciate talking you about. summarize that, but that's the, that's not what I'm proposing. <laughs> I, I'm, pro I'm just proposing that we well, follow what we say we're going yeah. to do. Well, I think we, we need to be concerned about making sure we're following well, what our policy states. Well, you take states. a vote, and and the vo the chairman has the discretion at the board to at the, at the advice of the board uh, to to bring forth the committees. <laughs> Okay, so now we can, at this point, now I may be wrong. It okay? says the committees composed of board members may be appointed, not shall be, okay, by, so. by the chairman at the direction. It means the direction of the board, the, the board says to the chairman, chairman, we would like committees because we have these issues and we have these concerns. And that's these not, are the committees we that we want to have handled. Well, that's what's going to take place that's tonight. That's what's going to take place tonight. We... But we, we've not gotten to the point we've identified that we have a need in, indeed to have a committee. We're just saying we're going to have committees because we're going to vote for them. Instead of saying we've got something we're going to work on and then we're going to we're going to vote for it. Right. So okay. we're just saying we're going to have meetings forever without having a specific need to actually conduct the business at hand. If we don't have business, then why me? Well, if the majority of the board, if the majority of the board approves these committees, then the majority of the board has established a need for the committees proposed. You can take any committee you want and disengage it, 
Uh, it's it's right. whatever the majority of the board proposes and needs. In order to further carry on the business of this district and the board, if these committees are approved or if they're not, mm -hmm. then business can carry on right. and you don't have to wait for another, well, the next meeting we have is December. Sure. So you've let the business that needed to be conducted. But what is the, if we know we got business to conduct, that's what I ask is, what is it? Do we, we don't know what it is now. We just know we need a committee to deal with it in the future. Well, you, you know, is that what we're we've got policies. Right, so our policy says the issues need to be discussed by the committee. The issues to be discussed by the committee must be approved in advance by the entire board. Well, so the entire board should determine what the issue is and then shove it to the committee, well, not the vice versa. What we're doing currently is the committees are going to have the autonomy to go okay. operate Mr. Davis. and determine what it is that those issues are. They vote on it, and then they send it back to the board. Let's That's go it. ahead and vote okay. on whether it stays on the agenda so we can move on. Okay. And then if it stays on the agenda, then you can you can further discuss it. If it doesn't, you're beating the dead horse. I just want that's why I was asking to move it today sense? so we could we could actually Well let's go ahead and vote on whether it stays on the shoot agenda. ourselves in the foot. I don't think we'll shoot ourselves in the foot with any decision. <coughs> okay, I'm good. Any further discussion? Call for question. Ms. Stoll? The the okay, the motion is to remove number sixteen from the agenda? Uh, no. Ms. Hale? No. Mr. Safty? No. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Ms. Hamby? No. Ms. Stout? Yes. And Chair votes no. So it will stay on the agenda. Now can I get a motion to approve the agenda? I make a motion that we approve the agenda with Mr. Safty's changes. Combining uh, 15H? Combining 15H2 15 and 3. Yes. I do believe that's what it was. Is that correct? Mr. Yes. Second. Okay. Second. Okay, so we have a first and second on 15 H. It's we're combining 15 H two and 15 H three. Yes. Okay. We have a we have a first and second to approve the agenda. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Now we have next on the agenda is the community comments. Mr. S David Stout. <coughs> You'll please Mr. state Sanky, your name are you and your address and yes, sir. <laughs> My name is David Stout. I live at 47 Bluffview Terrace, uh, Crossville, Tennessee, Great 558. And what, I, what I'd like to speak, it's been a long time since I spoke to the board. I, sp I spoke to the prior board uh, when we initially started coming, been about two years ago, I believe. I had some concerns then about how the board was operating from a, I come from a business background and training, but primarily business, and I felt like the board was not operating in a business-like manner, and I chose to, to speak to that, hoping to influence some consideration for change and understanding that this is a business. This is a business. Education is the function of our business, but it is a business. So starting with that, first, at first I want to always thank the board members for their service, every one of you. you. You wouldn't be here if you didn't love kids because this is not, you're not here for the money, that's for sure. So I definitely want to thank everybody for that. Um, I want to disclose that my wife is Shannon. She's on the board, so full disclosure there. I may be just a little bit biased. But <laughs> um, we've been attending meetings uh, for over two and a half years, and I have witnessed uh, the board having to operate in the most difficult of times, and that was during COVID. I appreciate how they moved through that. I, I want to put a shout out to Dr. Maxwell, the prior director of schools who facilitated that. And I, I believe did a wonderful job, and I appreciate the board navigating through that. Change is inevitable. You can either initiate it, or you can be forced into it. I think we can all agree initiating change is the best way to approach that. We require it of our students every day. It's time for change. 
The prior board struggled with the same issues. They did not rate themselves well. If you, the prior board's ratings are available on the system if you'd like to look and see how they rated themselves the prior board. <clears throat> they did a survey. The same issues of inclusivity, transparency, are again plaguing this board. Teamwork is not an option. You've got to have it. It is every board member's responsibility to facilitate inclusiveness, transparency, and respect. I have seen an absence of all three of those at various times. I think if you look at the prior votes that have been taken on many of the issues here, you will see a consistent pattern there. I encourage you to look at that pattern and see who is involved in each side of the vote. It may help you understand, are we facilitating change or are we resisting change? <clears throat> I am going to propose that doing things as you have always done them before is failing you. I'll end it with, I implore you to open to change new ideas and not try to protect processes that have failed you in the past. You owe it to our constituents, you owe it to the staff, and you particularly owe it to the students. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Next on our community comments is Mr. Craig Clark. My name is Craig Clark. Uh, I live at 2266 Highway 68 in Crossville, uh, 38555. The newspaper reports significant improvement in academic growth for Cumberland County students. Congratulations to the employees and the director of schools. The director credited this as being a team effort among the teachers and the staff. The total Cumberland County budget is $157.2 million. Almost two-thirds of that budget goes to the Board of Education, leaving one-third to fund all other county operations. The school district is the largest employer in the county with approximately 1,100 employees. Each of you has an equal portion of the county population to represent the voters and taxpayers in your district. You, along with the two county commissioners in the district, have a fiduciary responsibility to spend taxpayer dollars wisely. Each and every board member must be given equitable access, without regard to seniority, to participate in decisions. Voters expect the board to function as a team in the most efficient, effective, and fair and transparent manner possible. Voters also expect sufficient notice of meetings, opportunity to attend, and open access to minutes. In the past year, there have been 41 committee special called or work session meetings. Adding 11 monthly board meetings yields 52 meetings. The current committee process is grossly inefficient and denies full deliberative participation by all school board members on important issues. The repeated statement, all board members have a voice in committee meetings is a fallacy. Further, records of the meetings on the website are incomplete. Of particular note are missing minutes of, from budget meetings held in May, almost five months ago. I commend the board for seeking improvement in their operation and working as an effective team. Putnam County provided an alternative, having four general work sessions per year and monthly meetings to conduct their business, 16 meetings, inclusive of all board members in all deliberations. The work session format also provides for full communication with county commissioners on needs and issues. A key element to Putnam County's success, trust. Trust in the director of schools, 
the financial support staff, and the county commissioners. The board needs to focus on communication with the director of schools on a strategic plan that is objective with measurable goals and outcomes that can guide the tactical plans for the 1,100 employees in the district. Mm -hmm. I encourage the board to seek improvement to its function and strive for more effective process. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next on the agenda is our Brown property. And could you pull up the letter? Mm -hmm. Brown property? Yeah. It, it, the new, oh, we had a new offer from the Cantrell family, or from the Brown family. And well, the previous offer was 650 Correct. Mm -hmm. And our new offer is 450 50000 down. 200000 down. No, 50000 to be paid this year. And 200 for the next two years. Right. Uh, we wanted to put this before, I think we touched on it just a few minutes in the work session the other day, but um, I will entertain a, a motion. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. I will move to take no action. And I will second that. Okay. It, are there, is there any discussion? I think we discussed it last time. I think we it's dull. I'm going to do a roll call just in case. Yes. The, the motion is to take no action. Okay. Ms. Hale? Yes. Mr. Safty? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Ms. Hamby? Yes. Ms. Sal? Yes. And Ms. Boston votes yes. So, one of the two, Mr. Patton or Mr. Could we respond to the Cantrell family? Certainly. I'll prepare that. Thank you. Okay. School board reports. Next is our uh, TLN report. All right. Um, just so y'all know, it is now, there's a new title for my position. It was legislative representative. We are now called legislative liaisons. So a little bit of a change there going into the new year. Um, our new federal education funding work group is going to be meeting 11-6 through 11-15, and they're going to be looking into the Tennessee education funding numbers from the last five years, which totals $10.4 billion, federal document documentation requirements, and the costs associated um, along with those requirements that we have to follow and uh, stipulations for the federal funds that we take. And they've been tasked with formulating a plan for funding by the state before the legislature returns in January. So they're gonna be working on, on that process. And then next month, we have a new system for assigning letter grades to our schools. So that's gonna begin. Um, in 2017, a state law was passed requiring this new system, but the development and rollout was postponed due to COVID, so they're just getting it up and going again. In September, I attended a, a um, Board of Education, a State Department, regional town hall in Putnam County, and Mr. State was, Mr. Step was there as well. Uh, the department and the new Education Commissioner Reynolds were collecting feedback and suggestions regarding the other indicators, which is the only optional um, criteria, and it's the third of the criteria for assigning these school grades. So by law, by this law in 2017, there are now two required criteria, academics and student growth. The first criteria, academics, is defined by the percentage of students meeting or exceeding grade level expectations on their state tests. The second criteria is growth defined by progress students are making on state test performance compared to the average progress of all students statewide. And then the third criteria is the optional one that they're working on pulling together the other indicators criteria. So they've got a school letter 
grade working group and they've pulled individuals together from across the state in several different roles throughout the education system and the legislature. Um, I even saw when I went through the list there was a parent on there so they've got some parent involvement. They met five times during this month and they were tasked with helping to create letter grade calculations for schools that is transparent, meaningful, and easy to understand and that was per the task given by Commissioner Reynolds. The goal is to have A through F letter grades published for each school on the state report card in November. So that is forthcoming here this next month. Um, if y'all want more details or if you want to view the working group meetings, you can go to the um, Education Department website and you just search school letter grades. And all that information is out there. And that Thank wraps you. my report. And I can send a link to that to the board through the email, so you can just click and go. Mm -hmm. okay, I got that. It's, it's Thank you, Mr. Stone. Thank you. Um, next on the agenda is the any board members that can report from any training. I caught, oh, go ahead, Mr. King. I'm just going to say they have webinars periodically. Uh -huh. I've attended those. Yeah, they're, they're very good. good. They're good. Yeah, yeah, and that's why I jumped in on the October lunch and learned the board minutes and voting. Yeah, it was good. Next on the agenda is the legal report, Mr. Beck. There is no new litigation and there is no significant change in existing litigation um, for this month. So we'll have some more news for you next month. Perfect. As we step into, and thank you, Mr. Patton. Yes, ma'am. As we step into the director's report, Mr. Stepp. Uh, Madam Chair, can I request that we do the strategic plan first? I know Mr. Cox isn't from around here and he travels. Would that be okay? Absolutely. So Mr. Bobby Cox with NIET is going to look at the five-year strategic plan. Thank you, Madam Chairman, and Director Stepp and board members. I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you tonight and appreciate the latitude on on that. Um, I've been traveling for most of the week and I live in McMinnville and I think my family is hopefully waiting for me to get home. So I appreciate that. Uh, I They'll appreciate keep dinner that. warmed up. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yes, ma'am. I uh, wanted to say uh, a few words about uh, the work that we've done on the Cumberland County Strategic Plan. Uh, it's been a pleasure to work with Director Stepp, uh, the board members and the county commission members that have been on uh, the team and his staff. They've done an outstanding job of, of leading this process. When, when we first uh, engaged in this process, uh, Director Stepp uh, wanted to make sure that Cumberland County had a, a plan moving forward uh, for the next five years that not only engaged his staff, but engaged the community uh, as a whole. And I think he has accomplished that. Uh, just a little bit about my background, I'm representing the National Institute for Excellence in Teaching uh, this evening. I have 32 years of education experience, K through 12, and higher education. I uh, spent 21 years in the central office uh, in Warren County as a supervisor, and the last eight as a superintendent. Uh, so I have sat in his shoes, I uh, have sat in board meetings where you're sitting uh, for many years, I've served on the county commission in Warren County, so I uh, have a, a background in most of those areas. Um, strategic planning is, a, is an opportunity, I think, for a district to, to lay a foundation uh, from looking at your mission and vision to also looking at those things that are challenges in the district, but also looking at those things that, are, uh, that the district does very well. Um, the team did an outstanding job at doing that. Um, they laid everything out on the table. Uh, they noted things that they had struggles with, but they also uh, noted things that they're doing, doing really well um, in that process. So if we can kind of just scroll through uh, a little bit of that plan, we'll go keep going to the uh, right there. So the strategic plan development process consisted of these steps. We, uh, the board had set a mission vision and some, uh, some edicts, I guess, if you will, of what they would like to see uh, in Cumberland County Schools. Uh, we looked at those, identified those, and that was our foundation. Uh, we then identified focus areas, areas that were 
a need for the district, and then we did a SWOT analysis and we looked at the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats uh, that, that would impede the progress of the district going forward. From that point, we, uh, as a team, developed goals and action steps. Uh, each time from the steering committee going back to subcommittees that were established for each area, getting feedback from the public, bringing that back to the steering committee, uh, massaging that, looking at that, making sure that we gathered all of the, the feedback that we could. So there were several times that feedback went to and from subcommittees back to the steering committee to, to look at the goals and action steps. You know, the goal with the strategic plan and the five-year uh, plan, everything could not be uh, encompassed in that. But the good thing about the plan is that it is fluid and it is flexible. And as things are accomplished, uh, then that those things can be moved off and other things can be moved on. So Director Stepp and his team have established a process where they will monitor that plan uh, as it is being implemented and moving forward. So the last part there is that implement, implementation and monitoring plan. So we can scroll up to, I think, the five goals there in the colored areas. So where we landed uh, are these five areas. So K-12 framework and post-secondary uh, opportunities and career attainment. Um, emergency management and, and security issues, talent acquisition uh, and retention, athletics, and then, of course, academics. So those were the five areas uh, that we landed on. Um, as you can see, when we scroll on, we scroll on to the uh, goals and action step portions. So each, uh, keep on moving. Uh, we have a list of those people that are on the steering committee there in this public facing document. And then we have the uh, mission, vision, and beliefs uh, of the district that was set by the board. So if we kind of speak to the first one. If we just look at this one as an example, and we won't go through each one of those, but we have here in the public facing document, the K through 12 framework, the goal that was set, the action steps that are action items that will be worked on over the next five years, and then the performance metrics. You know, it's important to, to learn how are we gonna measure this plan. Uh, here's the action steps and that we're going to follow, but it's important to see if we're actually following those and measuring those. So each goal that you see <laughs> in this document has action steps and it has uh, performance metrics assigned to that. Um, we scroll to the, just the end of the document uh, for time's sake. The, if we look, scroll back up just here, please. One more. Right there. Okay. In the appendices, what will come next after the board's approval, if there's no changes, uh, we will provide or I will provide the district with the implementation plan and tools for monitoring that plan, uh, and then uh, a list of those subcommittees. So if we go to next steps, the next step in the process uh, that the team has laid out is that that steering committee will meet on quarter, a quarterly basis to review the progress discuss key accomplishments, identify challenges, and determine next steps. So this is truly a living, breathing plan uh, going forward uh, that uh, Director Stepp and his team can report back to the board, he can report back to those subcommittee members, and then that will be uh, a public-facing document that is there. Uh, in the background uh, from that public-facing document are very detailed uh, goals and action steps documents that Mr. Stepp can uh, provide to the board and, and whoever uh, that he would like to have those uh, that detail who is in charge of each area, uh, when is that to be accomplished, and you know that will be uh, followed up with with the monitoring plan. So it's a very comprehensive plan. Um, I think the team again did an outstanding uh, job of, of laying that out for the district and Mr. Stepp's leadership and then the board's leadership. Uh, on that steering committee has brought us to where we're at today. We started, I think, in October of 22 with a kickoff meeting with the board, uh, went into action in January, and now uh, we're to the point of, of pre presenting that to you for uh, approval at some point in time. So I'll be happy to answer any questions uh, that you might have uh, while I'm here. No, we thank you for okay. leading us through such a detailed report. And it, 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 
It's excellent. Thank you. I appreciate that. And again, appreciate the opportunity to, to work with Cumberland County Schools and uh, it's an honor to work with Director Steph. I, I've sat in his, his shoes and I think he has laid out a, a great path moving forward, not only for the district, but getting good feedback from the community and, and ensuring that uh, Cumberland County is on a firm foundation moving forward. So thank you again for the opportunity to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Since we're at that spot, um, do we want to, it is on the agenda to be voted on. Well, if, you, if you feel you've had enough time to see the, the bigger overview of it, you know, you could I vote don't. to approve. Yeah, so <laughs> once we get to December then, uh, I, can have a, I can have a open presentation of the strategic plan and we can talk through each part if you'd like. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we table this so that, because it's on here for a vote, to table this until we can have further review so that we mm -hmm. have a little longer to look at discussions. it. Discussions. I think. You know, yeah, I can I can set up a presentation if y'all want. Just to... I'll second that motion. Any discussion? All in favor? No. Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, we're going to table it. Okay, Mr. Step. Yeah. So just some school updates real quick before we move on. I say real quick. I'm going to read fast. So with school nutrition, they've done their health inspections. All of them are 97 or higher, and four of them were perfect. So great job with all of our school nutrition people. They got their self-locking door handles been installed and kitchen exterior doors, so thank you, maintenance, for that. Uh, this, one's, this one's huge. So they have uh, been one of the first counties in Upper Cumberland to implement the new TDOE Medicaid matching program for direct certified certification, and that's J code inside TISA, which means money. So, we are looking at increasing our J-coded free direct cert student certification by over 1,200 additional students, which means increased funding through TSIN for school nutrition. So <laughs> that was a big one. It's awesome. And then their joint farm to school project with coordinated school health uh, called Tennessee Harvest of the Month. Uh, July was fresh blueberries, August tomatoes, September soybeans. So check out on the link, and I'll send you the link. Um, Pre-K-8. Additional develop, uh, professional development for all the third grade teachers, RTI, all the interventionists, and also for ACT. So we got a lot of ACT practicing for the teachers uh, with our new program, so that's going great. Pre-K teachers receive Connect4 learning curriculum training, so that's a new training for them and updated materials. Uh, they're sending a team to the middle grades math training. Uh, Pre-K classrooms are nearly full, so we got 234 of 240 slots have been filled. So um, every school has been observed by the state now also. All fourth graders in district toured downtown. I think I sent you some pictures. Third grade farm day was awesome. Fifth grade classes are participating in BizTown curriculum and we'll visit BizTown uh, before winter break. Eighth graders went to Tech for the career fair and then on November 6th through 9th, all eighth graders would tour their high school and TCAT. So that's a great time. So 9-12 uh, curriculum. They're finishing the accountability phase and the appeals of the score of the data. So the data is going to be released in November, and we're in the last phase of appealing all those to make sure everything is right. So federal graduation rate, 10th grade cohort success rate, assessment data files, ELA, uh, proficiency assessment data, chronically out of school data. Um, the five-year strategic plan, uh, Dr. Maddox was uh, running one of the subcommittees, additional professional development for ACT. We talked about that. Uh, all athletic directors attended the TWS, TMS AA administrators meeting, a celebration, the induction of Mr. John Sailors at the CCHS Hall of Fame, so that was awesome. And there's a meeting held with study I and with local representatives. This also helps us with our ACT programs and RTI intervention programs. So career, college, or college career technical education, these are TISA numbers too. So. Work-based learning placements for our high schools have grown from 139 students in the fall of 2022 to 331 students this fall of 2023. Ooh. Yeah, pretty awesome. <laughs> Dual enrollment in CTE alone has grown from 79 students last fall to 355 students this fall. 
Eighth grade career fair at Hyder Burks. It was a huge success, Highland Economic Partnership. Uh, all CCTE teachers gathered to, for professional development on our work day to incorporate math into the CTE classrooms, and it was delivered by TTU and learned about other resources for CTE middle grades. All third graders participated in Farm Day. We already talked about that. FFA held their annual Farm Day. That was fun, despite the rain. The Upper Cumberland Advisory Council was held in Putnam County. Over 80 participants gathered to discuss how secondary and post-secondary partners can prepare <coughs> students for the workforce. And Dr. Eldridge was a, a big uh, implementer of that. Lots of great career exploration happening in our middle grades with our additional ISM teachers. So check out the CCTE Facebook page, she said. Flat Rock hosted a back-to-school bash. Uh, they brought a racing car in front of uh, Pineview for all the students to see and having a Q&A with the, with the guy who's also, I believe, works there at Flat Rock full-time. So that was a neat, neat experience for Pineview and the race car. Technology departments, inventory installed 1,200 Chromebooks for all the schools, inventory installed 100 teacher laptops at CTHS and Stone Elementary, completed 1,427 work orders to date. So that's just this year. Installed new district wireless network and a new uh, new look to the district <coughs> website. So way to go, Tabitha, on that. Uh, English as a second language required all Title III WIDA standards training has been completed at all the schools. ESL teachers participated in all their professional development. Um, they have to create their own individual learning plans. They did a great job. 36 new students have been screened to receive ESL service. So that's a large number in that. And it, they attended the Title III day at the federal programs. Emergency management and security attendance. Public school security grant has been submitted. Granted multiple accountability and graduation rate appeals. So that's part of trying to get everything right for TISA, right? Uh, Tennessee Data and Attendance Supervisors Conference successfully enrolled all returning and new students through online registration. First time here. So they did a great job with that. And then our safe school counselors working hard with the students. They're out in the schools every day. They don't, they don't hang out up here. Special education, they did the state special education preschool grant. So that's where we're adding, I think, two new, is it, I think it's two new uh, special education preschool classrooms. So that's pretty exciting. And it's all paid for through that grant. Uh, law conference coming up. Special education staff working digitally to ensure all students provided needed services. Uh, 65 new students with disabilities have transferred to CCS. And current number of students with disabilities is 873. And that's the students with IEPs, not all the unique learning needs that are counting in TISA. And then transportation, Tennessee State Inspection completed. All buses passed with no issues. All right. Pre-K and kindergarten safety packets delivered to all elementary schools. And the audit is now complete by the state. All, docu all documentation was approved, and they're good to go. So that's some of the stuff going on. <laughs> some, some more? Yeah, they didn't put everything. I told them to put the big things on there. So, but that's why they. There's not much. Could you go through that again? <laughs> yeah. Can I ask a question? Yes. We received an email for the poverty level in each school. Yes, grade. that was Miss Hamby, and that's what mm -hmm. I just talked about. So. Does that affect our TISA money? Yeah, that's the J code for people that receive free, reduce, or receive direct services. Mm -hmm. So she's went in and individually looked at her and. Patricia and Faith individually to every child to make sure we had them right. And there's a new formula, so that new formula got 1,200 more students on JCO. So that goes into our student information system and it's pulled by the state so they know how much money we, we get. So it does. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's great. It's big time. That's excellent. Yeah. I'd like to make a comment about the walk around town because mm -hmm. when I taught fourth grade, that was one of the projects that I enjoyed doing with my students. We always learned so much about Cumberland County. And um, I know the schools didn't instigate that. I think Frances Carson started right. that program a long right. time ago. And uh, she wanted the children of Cumberland County to um, to get to know their community. And I always learned something, and we would talk about it and discuss it. And I know the uh, third grades going to the farm has been, you know, very successful through the years. And that was instigated by um, farm, the Bureau. farm Bureau and, uh, of course, the Experiment Station. Yes. Because we're out there doing that. And the one time that I got to teach third grade, I got to go on the farm trip. And so I was excited about that. The kids love it. 
It, yeah, they do. They love it. And the teachers. <laughs> As a volunteer for several years, I got to enjoy yeah. those also. And BizTown was a, a really great thing also. A lot of good things going on in our Absolutely. school system. Those thank are you. all experiential kind of learning experiences. Yes, thank matched you. Matched up with careers, so it's pretty cool. Yeah. So going back to 15B, this is just the state compliance report that Ms. Boss and I have to sign that we're we're following all federal and state laws, so we have to do that each year. Is this going to be a voting item, or you just? Do we need? Mm -hmm. I don't. Does that no. have to have a vote? I don't no, think so. Need to, but. I'll, I'll entertain a motion to approve our compliance so report. Does need to I'll make a motion to approve. approve. Okay. Second. second. We have a first and second. Um, to approve the state <coughs> compliance report um, that we have to send in each year. Um, we have the first and second. All any in favor? Dis any discussion? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Perfect. Okay, next is the request for collaborative conferencing by the Cumberland County Education Association, Ms. Timpson. She did turn in all the, the signatures that were required. Um, this doesn't have to be voted on. This initiates the law. This initiates the process. So um, by law, once they turn this in, we're required by law to start that process. So you don't have to vote on it, but um, but we've already talked, Ms. Bray and I and Dr. Farley, and we've gone through the law, and we're ready to start that process. Okay. If it does not require and we're required by law, I think that pretty well covers it, so mm -hmm. it does not require a vote. And I can send out like a Q&A on collaborative conference to all the board so you kind of see what we're doing with that. Where's Ms. Bray? <laughs> <laughs> were you here when we did the very first yes. collaborative very conference? very first day, your last meeting. <laughs> your first day was our last meeting. Yes, ma'am. That was five, year, five, five years, years ago. ago. Did, yes. did Casey leave you her notebook? Yes. Or did Rebecca Wood leave you her notebook? I have, a, I have some information. Got it. Okay. Because that, I mean, it was, we all had huge notebooks. <laughs> Thank you. 15D, I'm going to defer to Mr. Pat. Sure. So several months ago, um, I sent to all of you some information on this lawsuit. Um, it initiated at least the first school district in Tennessee that was involved in this was Clarksville, Montgomery County. Um, this uh, is a lawsuit that has been proposed by the France uh, Law Group um, in California. It's multi-district litigation similar to the litigation that you've been involved in with Jewel. Um, it's the same firm that is, that is pursuing this case against several social media companies. Uh, this is a little bit different because you, you've got a law firm proposing that you join in a suit. Um, they have identified some issues that they believe are affecting students across the country, and they are actively recruiting school districts to join in this litigation. Now, the Lewis Thomason firm, Chris McCarty, who you, some of you are familiar with, uh, he is working with the France group in this litigation. <coughs> One thing that we might be able to do is to get Chris to come here or maybe participate in a conference call during a meeting to kind of give you some more information about this lawsuit if you're interested. Um, they've, the documentation that they provided, um, essentially what um, they're, they're getting at, just, just to give you a snippet, um, and to let the folks here know kind of what's going on. They say that France Law Group has commenced litigation on behalf of public entities such as school districts against Meta, TikTok, Snap, and YouTube, as well as other social media companies. The lawsuit alleges that these companies have caused a mental health crisis among children and teenagers that is marked by higher proportions of anxiety, depression and thoughts of self-harm, all of which severely affect their ability to succeed in school. Many children and teenagers spend an inordinate amount of time scrolling through Meta, Instagram, TikTok, and other social media platforms, 
where they are subjected to often harmful and exploitative content that uh, encourages disordered eating, unhealthy social comparison, and cyberbullying. As a result of this harmful content, students are experiencing anxiety, depression, and other mental health issues. Students performing worse in school are less likely to attend school, are more likely to engage in substance use and to act out somewhat violently, all of which affects a public entity's ability to fulfill its educational mission. So I think the main question that you've got to ask yourselves as board is, are these issues affecting us and our kids? Um, I think that should be what drives your decision and how you approach this. And, and to you know, in, informing as to whether or not this board as a whole is interested in pursuing this litigation. Ignoring the fact of who's proposing that you, that you join in this litigation. I think the primary question this board has to decide is if, do we have a problem that needs addressing by, by this type of lawsuit? Mr. Stepp, what do your counselors say in relationship to this, um, these problems with the use of social media with our children? I think a large part of our discussions, and this is direction, we're working on a strategic plan right now, is like the trauma-informed school system. And I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the principal will agree, the access to information that the students have now is unprecedented. Mm -hmm. And I think it is affecting how they do things. Um, we deal with more mental illness now than we've ever had. And I think uh, the community is also recognizing that uh, with the Trauma-Informed Community Alliance that we've partnered with. So I think that's the overarching discussion that we're having right now. And so we feel that social media could play a part in that. Did I hit that about right, principals? Did it? Okay. Especially the high school principals. Here's Mr. Callahan, Ms. Smith. Do you see? I think it's all grade levels. It, I'm, I'm sorry to say, it's, it's all grade levels. I mean, Parents allow access at a much younger age. Well, they don't get phones until they get to high school, right? Uh, <laughs> that's not pre-K. Oh, that's not correct. No, that is not correct. There are student representatives sitting down there shaking his head. I was hoping that was the case. Mm -hmm. Do we need to Do we need a motion to approve? I'm going to make a motion that we approve um, and allow this to move forward. Second. And joining this this yes, lawsuit. and joining this lawsuit. And okay. you do have a second. Okay. We have a Mr. Okay. Mr. King so second. Discussion. We have a first and a second with the motion being that uh, this school district join this meta litigation in the discussion yeah um, mr. Patton can you I looked a little bit about the responsibility for payment to yes. the firm um, but can you just clarify for the board how sure. that's gonna look for us and sure. if there would be any fees outside of the sure. award that we'd be responsible for very similar to the Jewel litigation. I've reviewed that fee agreement. It is very similar. It, it's a contingency fee agreement where this board's not going to be responsible for cost unless they recover funds for us. Okay. And yes, I believe that was 25%, it said, Correct. of the monetary settlement. It's a pretty standard contingency fee agreement for a case like this, in my experience. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Is there, um, let me deviate from this subject, but because I'm curious about it, I heard a report that, and we're talking about the mental health of, of our students, um, I, I heard that six, student, six children a day now die from gunshot wounds. Do you see any, any vision, or have any vision of any lawsuit that will be taking place in the future that will address the trauma the students are in as a result of their knowledge of these, um, of this. Um, Point of order. It's not what we're talking about here. Oh, thank you. I, I don't have, you don't have to answer that question. It, 
A point of order was called. Thank you. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. No. Okay, so let's do let's do a roll call. Ms. Tall. Yes. Ms. Hale. Yes. Mr. Safty. Yes. Mr. Davis. No. Mr. King. Yes. Ms. Handy. Yes. Ms. Stapp. Yes. And Ms. Boston votes yes. So the motion carries. Uh, the board will join in with the meta litigation. And I'm assuming, Earl, that you will let us know what. I will, what we need. I will work with Mr. Stepp to execute the documents on and, the authority that the, the board's given tonight. And just to proceed. Yes, And just let us know. Thank you. Okay, next is the TISA district plan. This is required by law. This is new this year. So we have to, we sat down with TDOE representative Dr. Fox and went through creating our goals for student achievement for the next up to 2028, I believe. And we have to give explanations and then we it gets, we report it to the state each year. And the, the um, TISA accountability report is required annually and the progress review board of TISA will determine whether the school district has taken the proper steps to achieve their stated goals. This was created last month. It had, it's been on our website. I presented at the education committee. All of this is this public announcement and public review is required. And then it is due November 1st. I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Okay. I'll second that. So we have a first and second to approve the TISA district plan for 2023. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? And thank you to the director and supervisors for pulling this together. It's a pretty big, comprehensive plan that was done in a short time. So thank you. Uh, next is the annual planning calendar for your review and the warm body count for your review. Pull up the planning calendar again. I wanted to point something out. There was one thing in October. Did we get that finished? It wasn't the numbers weren't going to be in until November. We're talking about the accountability. Yes. Yeah, it's like the letter grade. Everything's been embargoed until they can release their letter grades. I'm not sure how they're doing those formulas. They haven't really clued us in on exactly how they're creating those letter grades and who's going to get A's, B, C, D's, F's. I mean, we've sat in meetings with directors and they still don't have a a good answer to the OE to how they're doing that. We just know the scores are embargoed uh, till November, so we can't publicly release them. So we'll get but we, we have reviewed with the principals there, it's called a heat map, but it shows their annual measurable objectives and where they are and that kind of stuff. So we've already started talking. I know they're working up plans as we speak, I'm sure. Okay, thank you. I've got a question. Yes, sir. Mr. Stepp, is that, I know we discussed this on, on the day before yesterday at our work session. Um, is there any indication why our school system has specifically this year uh, lost enrollment? Uh, this is happening <coughs> in other counties around us too. Okay. So I'm not sure where they're going. If they're going to stay <coughs> online or what, I, I don't know where they're going. And we've talked to directors, several counties, their populations decreased which is a, our biggest concern is that funding piece mm -hmm. of TISA. So it's 68.60 per child. <coughs> but I, I don't know if it's homeschool or online schools. Home I just know school, once COVID school. hit, once COVID hit, a lot of, a lot of the students yeah. like working at home, just doing it online. Do we, do we have any statistics on uh, the number, which Nick, just mentioned uh, the number of students that are, whether the number of students that are being homeschooled and the number of students that are going into private schools in Cumberland County has increased. Do we have any numbers on that? I can get those numbers for homeschool. <coughs> well, just to go to homeschool, they, they fill out paperwork with us so that they can go. And private schools? Uh, church related schools we can look at it because they have to request the records from us so i can try to go through there and look at that well i don't want to 
I don't want you to do that unless it's the board's wishes as a whole to have that documentation available. Is there any sentiment of, of, of our board members on whether or not he should pursue that data? I like numbers. But I don't have a problem with that. I, yeah. I don't have a problem with it. So. How complicated would it be? Are we talking about a lot of extra we'll time look dedicated? We'll student information system. So. Is it yeah. clearly ready, ready in your hands? Um, well, Patricia and Faith will have to dig in it, so they run our SIS, so well, I'm not, I don't know how difficult it would be because I haven't ever run an SIS before. Well, right, there's if, a lot if, of data you can collect. If it becomes too difficult, then at the next board meeting, let us know, but it appears that there's no difficulty. No, I'd uh, like to say this. Yeah. Our board feels. There's some way to understand where they're right. heading to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. And then next on the item, uh, I think one of the board members requested these two to be on. Yes, the, the financial controller. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Well, I am, I am thrilled with Kim Bray's, um, Kim Bray's performance. <coughs> She's uh, basically doing three jobs at, at one time. So I would like to make a motion that we remove the human resource officer job description and the financial controller job description from our reservoir of, of employees and just do away with those positions. That's my motion. I, I will second that. Okay. Okay. So we have. Can you repeat first? that? Yeah. To remove, to remove the human <laughs> resource officer job description and the financial control job description from our inventory of jobs in the Cumberland County School System. I have a question. Yes. Well, can we? Can, we'll, can we get to, yeah, yeah, we'll discussion? Yeah. We'll get to discussion in just a minute. Let me repeat the motion. Okay. Okay. The motion on the floor. We have a first and second. Is that we remove the HR job description and the financial controller job description from uh, from our job history. inventory? Yeah, from our job inventory. And so now it's open for discussion. Yes. Okay. If by chance Miss Bray were to leave, how would we get, how would we get that done? I don't know. So no. I think we should leave those positions. If Miss Bray leaves. We'll shut down. <laughs> <laughs> so why would we remove yeah. the position? Yeah. yeah. Because they've been left unfilled for how long now? Um, well, Miss Miss Bray was HR, and you took over C. Oh, oh, in what January? Kind of when Casey left after a month at that. You started doing the job. Okay. So you've been, and then you were HR before. So we had an HR. No, we have. Can you speak to that? Having worked here and worn several hats myself, it doesn't work well. It's not efficient. And if that person leaves, who does the work? Well, I mean, it's, I think it's a very good point. Mm -hmm. My question would be, is there anything we can do to assist, whether it be look at the salary, look at the description, the description. What, what's been the, the hold up? What's so, been the hold up in filling the positions, Mr. So first of all, just to let you know, we had several people step up to help out Ms. Bray just to get through this, we thought would be super temporary. Uh, situation we're in. Um, we posted the HR March 1 of 2023, finance September 22, again September of 23. Now we got a new finance director coming, so I was going to post this finance position once we had that new finance director because we try to be great partners with that team because they run, they uh, we have to work directly with them. Uh, there was only three that met the minimum requirements for HR. Uh, we tried to interview all three, only one showed up, 
and we offered the job and they turned it down. Finance, we had five that met the minimum requirements and we changed it to the controller so we could widen the net to get somebody in there with finance experience. Uh, we interviewed all five, offered it to two, and they turned it down. Some of the things that they talked about were concerns about the extra duties in the meetings, lack of hybrid work schedule, which is huge in the finance field now, in the HR field. Uh, they can't work from home. Okay, I, I started to say, what do you? Yeah, those hybrid programs, you get to work from home. We don't do that here. Also, that finance and HR positions are, are very important positions, and we've got an admin assistant working with Ms. Bray right now to get through this rough patch. But at no time have I ever talked about removing those positions. They're too important. I mean, if we just look at our budget, how much was our budget this year? How many millions? 67. 64, yeah. 70 when you add all the federal. That person is the pivot person for all of that. Mm -hmm. So that person also has to work with all the federal program stuff, and they help get it ready. That person approves it, then I approve it, and then it goes to the state. So that's a hinge pin position. We got to find somebody. My suggestion would be, you know, let's look at salary. Let's look at what we can do that direction. I know the finance we allowed up to 75, but in, in the private sector, and that's a drop in the bucket in the private sector. And same with HR directors. Would we? I think 65 is our HR. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Can Can I ask a question? Could we, um, if we don't? do away with these positions, um, could we take another look at the job descriptions and see if maybe there's a little bit of changes that we could make in um, as far as education and experience? That's um, what we did. So when we changed the CFO job description, we tried to throw a wider net out by doing a finance controller. Um, so it wasn't a true CFO position. Um, we wanted to widen the nets to try to find, and they're just making more in the private sector. We've offered that both jobs, and they turned them down because, I assume, because of money and some of it stages. The the amount of work in those positions, you know, sir, what was it, 51 evenings they have to be here, in a, in a school year, so that's and on top of their come in at 7:30, work till whatever. So and, and I'm not saying, and I'm not saying don't have education <coughs> background, whatever. But sometimes it, you get somebody that's got 25 years experience. Sometimes that experience counts a lot towards the education. So we worked solely um, the ones that interviewed, and tell me if I'm wrong, Ms. Bray, but the ones that we interviewed and offered jobs to, their specialty was HR or their specialty was finance. They weren't educators or teachers. No, 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 that's not what I mean. Okay. And I, I mean, like if you get someone that has worked in HR, mm. That for 25 years. I got you now. I understand. And they've got an associate's degree, but not a bachelor's degree. They, you know. They'd be considered for that job based on the description. They accept the way it's changed now. Yes, yeah. but um, but before it was not. It was accounting. Yep. Yes, and so but I I don't know. We've got to look at these positions. They have got to be filled. If I we're going to keep them, they've got to be filled. If we're not going to keep them. Then we don't have to worry about it. Well, given given the the basis of this discussion, um, and the the comments made, I, I think it would be in the best interest of the Cumberland County School System if I uh, withdrew my motion. Now withdraw the second. So I apologize. Oh no, apology. I, discussion I, I, had to be made. I, well, yeah. I mean, is there anything that this board can do, needs to do, or can do? How about that? Can do <coughs> to assist you in getting these positions filled? Um, you've given me the flexibility of going up to 75 for the accountant. I don't know if we need to raise that another five. I mean, I'll have to look. Let me look at what the average private sector type stuff is and send you the numbers and then you guys look at the numbers and see if we can adjust or want to adjust or however. Yes, sir. You, you mentioned this hybrid job. Is is there um, is there any future in that for an accountant in Cumberland County to have a... Miss <laughs> Bray says no. You just yeah, can't. No access outside of this building to the accounting system. 
So to get on that server, it has to come from the computer that we have the license for. You have to be here to do the job. Correct. Okay. okay. So we, we don't have a VPN? Uh, no. We go through the finance department at uh, Cumberland County. Yet they, they don't have hybrid either, the finance department. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we could... We can't. We could look into a, a VPN, right? No. We have to do what the finance director of the county told us to do. County. I know, but I'm, like, can we not ask him if we can have a VPN? We don't have a finance director. <laughs> when they get, well, I mean, they haven't Mr. just quit Brock spending is money. Working. Is he still working? Yeah, they're still there. Through. I'm just. That's. We're trying to make solutions. If we not have a quick problem, if we solve every problem, if we can't do it, then we're never going to fix anything. I know personally. I do a lot of business. Uh, through virtual private network that allows me to do virtually anything from home, and that's where people that want these jobs are at, mm -hmm. at home with yeah. more money in their pocket. So for us to say, oh, we can't do it, well, we're, did we ask the right person the right question to determine if we can overcome this? So if we look at the hybrid or what is VPN? virtual private what is network, then we'd have to look at policy and procedures, and does it just count for certain people here, I mean, we got teachers. We got yeah, you're open. we got so many different mm -hmm. different. Um, it careers. have to be specific to the position if we were going to look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, those people are all working. Every, when when the door opened for everybody to go home and work, mm -hmm. that's where they're at. Like, if you want to compete, you got to compete in the realm that people are in, and that's what that's where they are. So, money, opportunity, flexibility—that's what they're after. Um, not being, I guess, potentially thought that their limit positions would be eliminated and would just triple up on someone that concept's pretty scary from a person looking to go to work at a, at a place so i would definitely not uh recommend eliminating job positions just because we can't fill them in the future um but vpn bridges gaps well and, and two i i, I appreciate mr safety putting or, or asking that, that this be addressed because then our questions are what can we do to help because these are such important positions and we're doing this with a bunch of people we got four and a half counselors we're short we're short teachers you know it's just bus drivers we're trying to figure out as many different ways to get people motivated to work for the school system and i understand that the positions are, are empty too but the cfo and hr is <laughs> we really need those positions yeah. <laughs> Could we get some numbers as to what we might? I mean, I thought 65, 75 um, would be would be sufficient for a human resource officer. For, for a human resource officer, then finance officer up to we've given him the authority to go up to seventy five. But it, could we look at maybe some of the other school districts and see? On that green frog, we weren't low. No, we, were. we weren't low at all um, when they did a comparison with other districts for those positions. No, we were. We were very we were much on close. target. We Plus, on we had the benefits. Yeah, we'll we had a mm -hmm. tremendous benefit package. But currently, so, it may have changed a little bit, and it might be nice to get an idea of what other districts are doing as far as any kind of um, blended or virtual. Working environment. If we, if we have to call up the control comptroller's office to find out if it's legally possible to do that, we could. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me, let me ask a question. Raise your hand if you work for the school system. Everybody who works for the school system. You know, thank you, because all of you are here constantly during our meetings, and I just mm -hmm. want to let you know that, that this, I'm Probably I'm not speaking for the board, but I'm going to pretend I am. The Board of Education appreciates that. Oh, no, you're Absolutely. speaking for the board. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that. I didn't want to. Thank you. All right, move on. So the next are personnel reports that we do every month and our substitute board list also. And our school news articles school calendars of events and I encourage you each of you uh, if there's schools in your districts that you're responsible for please reach out to the principal and ask to get added to your the calendar list or the email list and stuff and that way you they're get, good about sending them 
Yeah, yeah, that way you get, if there's an event you want to go to, you got access to it. And as always, I'm available for anyone to come in and talk or phone call anytime. So that's all my reports. Thank you for that. Okay, next on the agenda are the school board committees. Uh, can you pull this document? These are committees that are in... Uh, are that are being proposed. We are proposing to disengage the safety in contract and um, combine building and grounds and safety. And the first order of business would be to um, to make. I, I'll entertain a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. Second. I'd like to, I'd like to move to postpone. I have a motion and a second. You can't do that at this time, can you? Maybe the postpone. Yeah. Yeah, he can do, do that after the second. Well, it's a, well, 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 just a second. We've got a motion and a second on the floor mm -hmm. to for the proposed committees. Mm -hmm. Let's deal with that first. And according to parliamentary procedures, he, uh, he said move to postpone. If he has a specific date in mind, therefore we have to do that even though we have a first and second. Okay. okay. Uh, we have to discuss that. We don't have to approve the postponement, but we have to discuss it. Okay. Okay. Do you have a date in mind? Uh, our next regularly scheduled board meeting. It's December the 7th? 7th. Yeah. Okay. And we do a roll call. refresh me. <laughs> we do a roll call vote now, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so now the, we're making it, and we're doing a roll call vote on whether or not to postpone. On, on the move to postpone. Right. Yes. Okay. We can discuss prior to voting to postpone, correct? Yeah, you can discuss. So we can discuss for well before we vote. You can you can discuss. Uh, are you? I, I do have a question. You did discuss earlier. Is is it the we, same discussion or? Um, you have made a motion. You have made. You have moved. Yep. To postpone. Correct. You have proposed a date. Yes. Okay. So, do we discuss on? Um, I don't. Think I don't think we discuss on a move. I think we just vote on a move. We we vote on a move. You don't, don't discuss on a move. Right. Yes. So there's no reason for discussion if the postponement is approved. We would right? discuss at the later date. Yes. Yes. If it you know if it's approved. Okay. okay, so now we vote on the move. On the move. Okay, so what is on the floor is that Mr. Davis has proposed, has moved, that we move the discussion on the school board committees to a next board meeting, which is 12 7 23. Ms. Stoll? No. Ms. Hale? No. Mr. Safty? No. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Ms. Hanby? No. Ms. Stow? Yes. And Ms. Boston votes no. So now let's go back to the original motion, which is to approve this approve as the is. approved committees disengaging the safety and the contract. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. I move to object because the policy 1.3 prohibits from doing that. 1.3 prohibits them from doing what? Having standing committees? No, it doesn't. doesn't. It's on the board. You read it. What? It does. These are special committees. Then. So then we're going to yeah, consider these special committees. The policy is a standing committee, and so is the. So if these aren't standing committees, what are they? We're appointing them as special. That doesn't change anything. That's in the. Let's see. Mr. Patton. What, what was the last statement made? I didn't he is saying that um, she said that we would appoint them as special committees, and he is saying that in policy 1.300 that um, we do not have standing committees. Well, I mean, that is what that, that's what the first sentence says. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, again, it's the, the whole. It the, the policy, the board shall operate without standing committees except for the executive committee and the policy committee. However, 
Special committees composed of board members may be appointed by the chairman at the direction of the board and as the needs of the board shall require. Now, you know, the board by majority vote um, can um, suspend policy if it needs, if, if, it, if that's the desire of a majority of the board. Uh, can suspend a policy or can suspend a part of the policy. So, um, or we could just correct it instead of and follow it. You know, do it mm -hmm. as it's supposed to be done. You right. could. Or I mean, stop long enough to write it correctly and then follow it. Right. Or we could just dis dismiss the fact that it says that it's going to be operated at the direction of the board as the needs of the board shall require. So if we don't have direction and we don't have need, then the special committee doesn't have the opportunity to do anything. Well, I think we have a need for, um, for the committees that we think are appropriate. And it's, it's going to be, I mean, you're going to have a budget need, you're going to have a building grounds need, you're going to have safety need, and you're going to have athletic need. Specific uh, in policy. Specific need. It doesn't have to be a specific need. We can, well, just, for, we can just say if there's a need. Uh, the way that the policy reads, it does say that they are, special committees are appointed by the chairman and the direction of the board and as the needs of the board shall require. So I think what we're missing is discussing what is the need and, and do we need to set up a, a standing committee for that or do we need to set up a special committee for that? If it's a standing committee, then we need to come back to our policy and make the adjustments there. If it's a special committee, then it just stands. It's like an ad hoc. It's a special committee that stands to accomplish a task that the board's asked us to accomplish, and then it's discharged. It's done. So our, our, that's the way it reads in our policy. That's the way it reads in the TSBA sample policy. So for us to say we're going to make these special, special committees, that doesn't work because they can't just sit out there and stand out there until something comes up. It has to be for a task, and then it's discharged when the work is finished or earlier by the majority of the vote for the board. So if we say we're done with what you need to look into for us, we're disbanding it or discharging you, that may even be before the work has been completely finished. So we can't have standing special committees. It's a standing or it's a special. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? May, may I say something? Yes, ma'am. Um, you're talking about as needed, uh, for one, policy is absolutely needed, uh, and it, it is a standing committee, um, according to that's policy. A, that's an opinion. First and second. That's your opinion. And that is according to policy that the executive committee and the policy committee are standing committees. But we can take a look um, at this but, like we're doing um, for others. But also, um, we have a lot of building projects going on. We also have... Um, maintenance issues and maintenance projects going on so therefore that that constitutes building and grounds and safety is always always needed and um, that is an all the time thing um, budget and um, we need a budget committee um, to discuss our finances everything that's going on I mean I don't understand why there has to be so much controversy and so much so many issues um, this is, you know, I, I don't know. I don't understand well, I it the, at all. I think so. the question is, do we need committees for that, though? I mean, is there a specific task that we're assigning to those committees that we have to develop a special committee for to accomplish? Or is this, is, is this something, as we've discussed in our work sessions, that the entire board should be involved in at budget time uh, with the sure. building? And are we muddying the waters for yes. the director of schools and for the administration by, by getting involved in a lot of the school business that is not the board purview by having involvement as committees. I think that's why the policy says what it says. And that's why it's, and, and that's why this, this policy, right, board committees, is a template that the TSBA has developed. Yes. And we've adopted and we've not modified. Now, how, whether or not we pervert it or not, is or we d d elect to suspend it, or we choose to read it in, in a manner that it's not intended to be read in, right? Because there's words and language in here that we use the word shall one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Shall's definition is an imperative command usually indicating that certain actions are mandatory and not permissive. That's what shall means. 
Cornell law says the same thing. It says that when it's used, its intent is to express a command or an exhortation, you shall go. It's used in the regulations, directives, express what's mandatory. It shall be unlawful to carry firearms. It doesn't say it may or might or could be. It says shall. So if we're going to use the word shall, right, all reports by special committees shall be made directly to the board. The board shall operate with outstanding committees. All reports by special committee shall be made directly to the board. All a special committee serving in advisory capacity shall consist of less than a quorum of the board. So if we decide to have a committee with less than a quorum of the board, can we just say we're just going to change it, shall with may? We might have a committee. We might not. We may have a quorum. We might not. Are we going to follow our, our language or are we not going to follow our language? Right? Our other language says that we were going to follow policy. Okay? Policy 1.1, all powers of the board lie in its action as a group. Therefore, individual board members exercise their authority over school system affairs only as they vote to take action at an official board meeting of the board. Board actions, decisions, policies are official only when approved by the majority of the membership of the board at a legally constituted meeting of the board and recorded in official minutes of the board. Board actions and decisions. That document is not board actions or decisions. That document was made independently. That document was not transpired, not given to us in a board meeting. It was given to us in an email. It was attached to the agenda. But it was in an email prior soliciting everybody to be on that list. Wait, no, you don't have to be on the list. Right, but it's an action of the board. Or, well, and it's not, and this is not, that's not how we operate. Well, we don't operate via email soliciting people to be on a committee. Well, then let's let the board vote. Yeah, call for the question. <coughs> the question at this point is to move the. the no, that's already been. No, that's already been. Voted. That's been already been voted on. The, the motion and second right now is whether or not we to approve the We have a motion and a second on the floor to accept the proposed committees, um, as presented, uh, disengaging the safety in the contract. And just the committees, not the committee members. That is correct. We'll get to that next. Um, Ms. Dull? Yes. Ms. Hale? Say the motion again. The motion is to accept, to approve the proposed committees. <coughs> not the members, but the committees. Yes. yes. Okay. Mr. Safty? Yes. Mr. Davis? No. Mr. King? No. Ms. Hanby? Yes. Ms. Dow? No. I like policy. And and Miss uh, Miss Boston vote chips. You may you may turn that question over to the attorney and have him respond to the question: Did we violate <coughs> policy? Did that we violate be, policy be, by voting on that? He doesn't have to answer it now. Well, just but to say, well, maybe if I may, please. I'd like to make make a motion that we suspend policy one point three zero until it can be revisited. I'll second. So we'll suspend that? The entire policy? That's the point of we order, that's not on the agenda. Uh -huh. that's yeah. not if you look at 1.6, it's there. Um, okay, Earl, for right. what reason though? Why would we? 1.6, policy development and adoption, uh, suspension of policies, it's page one, line 25. Any board policy or part thereof may be suspended by an affirmative vote by a majority of the members of the board. And folks, I mean, look, state law requires this, that this board meet four times a year. That's that's what state law requires. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, there's an argument, and I understand, and it's a good faith argument that deals with how you're going to conduct the business in addition to the four meetings a year that the state requires. Um, but to put it in perspective, that's that's really what this is about. Um, how much time is involved with committees versus special meetings or, or work sessions or however you want to put it. Um, but I think this a majority of the board can, however, whatever that majority looks like, uh, can conduct the business of the board, can suspend a policy, can suspend a portion of a policy, um, and I don't think that 
this board is, um, I suppose it would be appropriate to suspend a part of the policy if, if that's what your intention is. Until it can go before the policy committee. Because I certainly have no intentions, or it's not my intention, to, to violate policy. But if that's the case, then this policy has been violated for years. For years. Since yeah. 2000. Since, yeah, for years and, and until this particular year, for some odd reason, uh, no one's ever questioned it. Right. Uh, it is being questioned now. It's being challenged. And so, Ms. Parliamentarian, we have approved this. We have, the, we have approved the prospective committees uh, that, are, that have been proposed, and, and, and that's, on the, that's already been approved. Can, I guess, the, I don't know if this is a parliamentarian question or a legal question, Earl, but the policy itself is not on the agenda. But and we can not suspend since it's not on the agenda. I don't think we can. Right. I'm sorry. We, we cannot suspend. suspend or partially suspend this policy since it was not on the agenda, or can we? No, I, I think. Because it applies. I think you can. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't think there would be anything illegal about you suspending a policy. So every time somebody wants to just bypass well, the, the, the fact that we're not supposed to change the agenda, we just vote to suspend whatever policy. <coughs> Until we can then we get can, Then we can yeah. just get a vote. We can go straight to vote. We're just going to suspend it. We're just going to go straight to vote. And if you have the majority of the vote, yes, you can. Awesome. How do you know you have the majority of the vote until you vote? You don't. You vote. Oh, okay. I, I think that we also need to speak with TSBA regarding this as well, since this is their model policy. I have spoken with Ms. White. I have as well. So, so, so we did counsel so we, on that. Is there, is there a motion? Just question, Earl. There is no motion. We're, because I, I was there no, in the voting, that. was there a violation or not? Because the way that I read this is that if the majority of the board votes, it's not a violation. The way you're reading the which policy. 1.300. Um, special committees by majority of the vote. I do not think that the board has acted illegally. Okay. Thank you. So there's no need to go ahead and no, suspend I, I the policy I'll if it's not my been. Okay, so moving forward so we can get, hopefully get past this tonight. Um, the policy states that the chairman, I am not, uh, these I sent out an email, which has been done, um, you know, if you have a special interest in a particular committee that you would like to serve. If you do, let me know. I try to, you know, the, every chairman, I won't say it just me, tries to accommodate. Ms. Stout, Mr. King, Mr. Davis, and Ms. Nichols did not respond. Um, the remainder of the board members did respond. So I have tried to accommodate as, as much as possible. Um, and so these are the proposals. Mm -hmm. And I'll entertain a motion to accept the proposed uh, members of each committee. I'll make a motion to approve the proposed. Second. Okay. I have a first and second to accept the the proposed um, discussion. Okay, the floor for discussion. Um, just on from my perspective, I did not submit my name for any of the committees this year because of the question regarding the standing versus special committees. And I wanted to have the opportunity for the board to be able to discuss the need for that um, before I submitted my names for anything because we didn't know what type of committees without discussion we were gonna want or need, you know, with the need of the boards or the district was going to be. So um, there are some committees that I would like to be on if the board has determined that we are going to establish these well, committees. Well, we can have no more than, than a quorum. Mm -hmm. We have, let, have to have less than a quorum. Mm -hmm. And if you put four members, which we have done so in the past, mm -hmm. but if you put four members 
you and you have a two to two vote, you get nothing total. Yeah, so we like to keep it at three, and mm -hmm. three has been normal. If this board approves additional members on um, committees, that's not up to me. I'd like to say something. Sure. I don't want me challenging the current state to appear to be opposition to be combative, okay? I'm, I'm asking for y'all to understand that there is, we, we're, we're trying to do what we say and say what we do. And my intent is, it, is to work is with- Is it we? <coughs> Can you say that again? I'm, my, I'm sorry, my, I don't know that I understood that. My intention is to work with each of you all in a more in, in more of this capacity in a less separated capacity right so what i'm asking you guys to do is read read this committee policy through a different set of lenses that puts it in order of operation i can provide that at a later date and i won't get in the weeds on it i know you want to keep moving and everybody does but i find it important to to understand that if we do continue on and there's five votes and that's all well and good, that's not gonna keep me from wanting to work with anybody mm -hmm. or doing it. So long as we understand that there are a couple things that we are going to have to adjust because it does tell us in here, issues to be discussed by the committee must be approved in advance by the entire board. I, I think there's no way we can misinterpret that. I right? think we can, we can clear this up. Uh, I know that I have already asked that this policy would be put on the policy committee. Whether it needs to be modified, whether it needs to be updated, whatever the case may be, and I'm, and I'm gonna repeat. I've, I've so been here for you? seven years, it's never been challenged before, but it's being challenged now. And not as long as it's being challenged now, I think we do need to go back and look at it yeah. and, and, and maybe modify it, and I'm gonna say, clean it up. Let's go clean it up. But I have already asked that this be put on the policy committee if the board approved the policy committee. When did you ask that? When did you ask for it to be put on the policy committee? I asked committee? Ms. 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 Hamby and I talked, and I said, this is this is something, because I agree with you on I get emails and, and messages a lot from different people of, because I would like this we're to be put on the policy committee. In. And through of awesome. TSVA to be addressed. Awesome. Yeah, I, again, I'm just intentional about the idea that we work more closely together. Who's on these mm -hmm. policies? We identify that it doesn't matter the order of the names or the chairperson or how long they've been here. As long, so long as we can identify that the board is going to direct committees instead of the committees directing the board, it's irrelevant. And that's why I intended on trying to move this to another date and time mm -hmm. so we could really talk through all these things mm -hmm. and, and Identify the things that are overlapping, that are contradictory within four or five different policies. Well, I think and that was the intent. So I it's think not you will to find that that periodically language in our policies does need to be, because a, a, a situation will arise, and mm, that you know maybe we need to go back and change the policy. Um, one, so one of the county commissioners I talked to recently looked at me and said, you know. You can make anything you want out of these policies and interpret them any way you want. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, well, do, do we, should we ignore that then, ignore policy, or what do we do? I think, I think it depends on what we intend on them to do, which is guide us as a group, right? right. If we're going to pose a question, what do we do about it? Well, we clean it up. We make it plain language. If we want it to do something, if we want our intentions to be visible, let's, let's mean what we say and say what we mean, instead of making them vague and... and, and well, a bit able to be misinterpreted. Well, but TSBA, let me just address okay, I'm that. Sorry. And mm -hmm. um, there's, there is a, 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 a sort of a, a procedure that you do with policies. You, you make them general at first, okay? And then if a policy doesn't, doesn't quite fit, then you narrow down the scope of terminology in that policy. But all policies, and this is from TSBA, they they start out very broad, okay? And as you see that the language that you pick mm. might be too broad and conflicting, but actually that's 
the way of policy at its first level should be written <coughs> at the broadest level. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, it's just order of operations. I think is where we're messing up, but no worries. Mm -hmm. We have got a motion uh, to accept the committees as proposed, uh, committee members as proposed, uh, and we have a second. Is there any more discussion? Any other discussion about who wants to be on what committees? Well, I don't. The motion and second is for this. Um, and, and if you, in my opinion, if there's someone that doesn't want to be on one of these committees, can they not let you know that they do not want to be on that particular committee and just... Yes, I mean... Then I'll swap out with anybody, <laughs> yeah. you know? I mean, if somebody wants to be on the Safety and Building and Grounds Committee and... I would like to do that, Robbie. I would take you up on that. Okay, well, um, I'll swap out. And where are you? You're in the Come Athletic on, Committee? Athletic. Mm -hmm. I'll go to the Athletic Committee. Perfect, thank you. Okay, okay. so Shannon's going on Building and Grounds. Will you make a note of that, Diane? And Robbie, you're going to swap out with Shannon. Uh, Shannon. The athletics. Okay, athletics. Okay. I'd like to be on the policy committee. Don't we have to vote on what's standing right now before we make these changes? <coughs> well, th that that is kind of the vote, and, and during discussion, I guess we can discuss who wants to be on what committee since, and then vote on it. And then finish the vote. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who's on policy? Um, if you put a fourth one on policy, you're going to be stuck with four and with the two and two vote. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, but well, to your that. point, Anita, number four in our policy says a committee shall serve no longer than the annual organization meeting, which is today, um, unless reappointed to finish a designated task. So if we've got a designated task to finish, then let's keep it going. If not, we're going to say it's done, and then we're going to um, appoint the committees, right? We are appointing the committees now. So we're, are, we effectively, we're are we effectively saying that there's no more business to be done by those committees? No, we have reappointed the new the people committees. We've got, we are now trying to vote to, to disengage the safety and contract committee. And, and yes, we, we have disengaged okay. the safety and the contract. Cool. Uh, and we have combined building and grounds and safety. Um, it has been a, a little bit, we can stay hardcore and say, you know, these are the ones that were proposed. Um, I, as every year, the chairman always sends out the email and says, do you have a special interest? Do you have a special area? Ms. Stout, Mr. King, Mr. Davis, and Ms. Nichols chose not to respond and I can't read your minds right well so that's where that's what we did so I took the ones that we had that responded that where the interest was and put them as best I could so I, I don't know how else you would challenge that well, I, when is, you don't respond is there really a concern though with having four on a committee since it's just a either a recommendation or not a recom right it's so advisable. we're not really voting to say we're going to do this or not do this so we could we're, vote we could be voting to send something to the full board right so if it's a split vote we could say we're still going to send it to the full board and with with the notification that the vote was split on it it was a you split vote that. That yeah it's reasonable yeah. okay so if there's some folks who truly want to be involved and it puts a fourth person on the committee okay. we could just proceed that way so, Nick, you want to be on policy? And policy meets monthly. Yes. And Shannon's going on building and grounds in place of Robbie. Robbie's going on athletic in place of Shannon. Is that correct? Yes. Is so that the only changes that we have met? If we're adding a fourth, does anybody else want to be a fourth on one of the other committees? Does anybody else want to be a fourth? If not... I'm going to move forward. Um, Diane, do you have those changes? Uh, actually, Teresa, would you mind? Um, I'd like to go ahead and go on budget if we're going to do a fourth. I'd like to be involved on the budget.
Okay. So we've got Shannon <clears throat> on. This would have been so much easier had you just responded. Uh, building um, grounds and safety and budget for Diane, Shannon. tell me the, the, the changes you've okay. got. I wrote down Shannon on building and grounds, Robbie on athletic, Nick on policy, Shannon on budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to do and Nick, are you staying on uh, yeah. athletic? Yes, ma'am. So you can't do it. You can take my place on budget. Please. Please. <laughs> Please. Um, I apologize. This would have been so much easier. Um, Diane, tell me who you've got on budget. Okay. For the document, Teresa Boston, Chris King, Anita Hill, and Shannon South. We can't have, we need to have a fifth then. And Anita. Okay. Okay. Who have you got on building and grounds? That would be Shannon Stout taking off Robbie Safty and keeping Rebecca Hamby and Elizabeth Stoll. Okay. And then on athletic, you're removing Shannon and putting Robbie. And on policy, you've got who do you have on policy? Becky Hamby, Sherry Nichols, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Stoll, and Nick Davis. Nick Davis. Okay. Those are your proposed members of each committee. Any further discussion? Okay. Ms. Stoll? Yes. Ms. Sahel? Yes. Mr. Satton? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. King? No. Ms. Handy? Yes. Ms. Stout? Yes. Mm. So those are your approved, that motion approved, Ms. Boston voted yes. And may I make a suggestion for consideration of the board as we move forward with the committees? Um, I had a, a county brought to my attention um, who operated, they don't any longer, but who operated on committees. And they actually chose um, one day a month to meet. All committees met on the same day. And so they would start at like four o'clock and it would be from four o'clock through all the committees. So everybody would show up that was on the committees. Boom, 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 boom. If there was something that a committee didn't have that needed to be addressed that month, then that committee passed and it went to the next committee. And so there was a standing day and time that they had every month for the committee meetings. And that made it real clear and concise for board members, staff, director, public, media, Everybody could that would show be up. Great if everybody schedule work together. <laughs> well, we just pick just like the board meeting. We pick we pick one meeting. It would be a lot easier for one day at a certain time than it is every month trying to find different days. I think that's something that could possibly work, mm -hmm. um, except for when budget meets in the April May. Well, time. we could always add more. Be, mm -hmm. In my opinion, yeah. that needs to be up. That needs to be left up into the individual board members who sit on those committees. It's going to be up to them to determine what is the most convenient and how often they need to meet. Uh, Building and grounds may not need to meet every month. Well, that's what I'm saying. We just set that day and, and a time to start. And if building and grounds doesn't need to meet, then they don't need to meet. But we know that we've got that time set. And they just say pass, pass. and. No, nothing on the agenda for this month, and then the next committee goes. That would really um, help my people, I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it would allow us to all know we've got this night, this time, to work around whatever other obligations that we have and, and for everybody else, okay. and it's I'm, all combined I'm, in one night. I think that's okay. something that we will have to discuss at a different time. It is almost really 8 o'clock, like and uh, I know that I have a family obligation, and I would really like to go home. That was put out for consideration okay. since Next we're moving forward. Next on the forward. agenda is the approval of the first reading of policies. Um, we did not have any uh, first reading. Um, we did not have a, a meeting in October, and we have one for second reading, and that was the policy 4.700 testing programs that came out of the policy committee for the consideration board. 
I'll make a motion that we approve policy 4.700 4. for second reading. Second. Okay, so we have a first and second to approve. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't need a second. That doesn't need a second to come need. out. I'm so confused. It's okay. Um, any discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, Mr. Davis, I don't think there was anything coming out of the Athletic Committee. Negative. Um, budget Committee, there was nothing uh, that came out of the uh, committee budget committee meeting. Building and Grounds, Mr. Safi. The, the uh, only thing, we made some important headways in our discussion. It was one of those uh, meetings where there wasn't anything that we uh, talked about that had to be approved by the board, but I've given everybody notes on the meeting, and um, thank you, Diane, for printing these out. These notes are not official minutes to the meeting. They have not been approved by the board, but if you want to know what took place at the meeting, then they're verbatim. It's in the, the notes, and that's all I'm going to say about it. Thank you, Mr. Safety. Um, Ms. Beth, Ms. Hamby, safety. We did not have a meeting, but Mr. Stepp, I had asked before, are all the door locks completed? Um, Ms. King, or Ms. Bray? They've not all been installed, but they've all been purchased and are on the site. We're very close. So we had a, we had a supply chain issue, is that yep. correct? That's, that's been going on for a couple of months. Have they have More they updated time. at all? And, and I know I, I work in the, where I have to order supplies, so I do know that. So they, are they, are all <coughs> they are all now on site, so we can complete this. Thank you. Perfect. Um, contract committee, there is nothing to report. Um, next on the agenda is the chief financial officer's report. Ms. Bray, would you please? Well, as you can see, we finally, some revenues have actually started coming in, and it's pretty much caught up with our expenses. We're a little bit different there, but hopefully in the next couple of months, that'll square away. So I don't really have any concerns at this time. The only thing that concerns me is you have the sales tax report, and you notice that we're already hundred over $100,000 behind there. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, in the next few months, that will catch up. Just keep in mind, anytime you look at this, that that's a two-month lag. What you see in October is cash register receipts from August. So I'm trying not to panic just yet. Ms. Brown, yes. when you say behind, you mean like budget. Month, month over month? Or Correct, month over month. Okay. Yeah, budget. Thank you. Two budget. But like I said, you got to keep in mind this is a two-month lag. So this is what was collected in August. It's just now showing up in October. Everything else, we're pretty much on projections. I don't see anything right now that I'm overly concerned with. Do you have any questions? Thank you. If not, we can move on to the budget amendments. Okay, the first one is a grant that Ms. Hobby applied for from the Governor's Book Bus Funds. This is a private fund. This is not taxpayer money, but we were awarded $16,500 to have a book bus. Yay. So we're gonna donate a bus and they're gonna equip it so that it can go around and visit and children will have better access to books. That's yeah, that's great. Thank you for your work on that, Ms. Hobby. The next one is the Public Schools Security Grant now, this is not the Safe Schools Grant, because that was that went away. Mm -hmm. We've been told right now that this is a one-time grant. So this is the only year that we'll be receiving this money. There's no matching funds required, but it's $282,000 for this one year. What are we doing with this? Well, right now we have written into the grant, we have $100,000 towards fencing. We're buying Knox boxes. Uh, Mr. Magnuson is wanting to expand his program where we put the six inch numbers and letters on all the doors so that our EMS people, if they would come in an emergency, they could identify what room they're going to. 
and then I have put another 100,000 in for some additional lock sets and some cylinders so that we can standardize some locks at some of our other schools. I need to approve that. I need a motion. Move to approve. Second. <coughs> Is that both budget amendments? Both budget amendments, please. Okay. So there's a motion on the floor to uh, approve both uh, budget amendments. Is there any discussion? Ms. Dull? Yes. Ms. Hale? Yes. Mr. Safty? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Ms. Emby? Yes. Ms. Stout? Yes. And Ms. Austin votes yes. So your motion carries and both have been approved. Thank you. The next one is on the CTE Perkins Basic Grant. Uh, this is just to increase the equipment and remove some of the funds that were allotted for industry certifications. Do you want to go ahead and do all three of them? Sure. Yeah, thank you. The next one is just a cleanup for our Tennessee all core budget. Basically, this just aligns with the actual people that we have in place for these positions. And it just matches e -flannel. But we basically had to wait until we got everyone hired until we could determine where we needed certain funds. Move to approve all three. Well, actually, 142. All three of... And then the final one is the, the Federal ESSER 3.0. And this basically is just reallocating some funds so that we can pay someone a stipend for overseeing the uh, all four tutors this year. This will just be a one year. This is the final year of Tennessee all four. And these are funds that weren't needed in the Social Security category? Right. Okay. Are these, is, 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 this, is this the position that Ms. Barnaby right. held? Right. But this is just a stipend because someone else has absorbed all the rest of her duties. Who, who absorbed her? her? Ms. Hobby. So Ms. Hobby absorbed, I mean, what, what, what are you talking about? For. Tennessee all four tutors. So she absorbed that position is what you're saying? Yes, correct. For the I thought last you meant she her absorbed her salary. No, 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 her position. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, that's what it, she so just absorbed. The, that's the same number as Dr. Wittenbarger. So we're paying her a stipend to absorb Instead that of a position. Instead supervisor salary. Right. Okay. There's a lot of documentation that goes along with Tennessee all four. There was a grant that had to be written. There's a lot of I's that have to be dotted into each summer school. Cross. Summer school, which is an undertaking all into itself. And that's so this is did, the last did, year. Why did Miss so. Barnaby no longer have that position? And that may be a personnel question, none of my business. But if there's a lot of work that goes into it, did we not need that position? Yeah, that that's what I assessed it as. You assessed that we didn't need that position. Okay. And it would have gone away after this year. So done Everything done. goes that away after September the 24th, right? Or 2024. The, whatever that date is. Where did the, what, what is the balance? Where did the balance go? It's just you being utilized in other lines. I mean, they've absorbed it. In other, it's all learning loss. We have to use a certain amount of those funds for learning loss. And we, we spent it on software in that part of the money we spent. Interventionists, all the above. So, so it's... It stays you have with these ESSER funds. But it's being you utilized. Have many internal accounts within the ESSER funds, and it's like a line out of you can just transfer. Right. Gotcha. It's all got to be attributed to learning loss, to improve learning loss. Madam Chair. Yes. I will second Mr. Safty's motion to okay. approve 17D. Thank you, Mr. King. Ms. Stoll. Uh, is there any discussion? I apologize. Any I think we had it. Ms. Stoll? Yes. This is to approve all three. The, the resolutions. Meet. Ms. Hale? Yes. Mr. Safty? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Ms. Handy? Yes. Ms. Stout? Yes. And Ms. Boston votes yes, so the motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bray. Thank you, Ms. Bray. Next on the agenda is the consent agenda. Move to approve. Okay, so we have a first. Do we have a second? Yes. Second. Mr. Davis seconded. So we have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? 
Aye. 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 All opposed? Next on the agenda, do we have any, any questions from the media? Do we have any old business? Heather Shirley, you've got a question for us. If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? And just a reminder, right, no meeting in November, but December 7th is our next meeting. Right. Every time I hear everybody says aye, I swear on the fire shirt. Okay. I'll let her know. Aye. 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 Aye.